Hi friends, I know you opened this video because you saw a very catchy thumbnail which said you have to solve 10,000 questions to clear FRM part 1 exam and in this video I will try to answer how many number of questions you should solve to clear FRM part 1 exam. Reason to put the thumbnail like this like you have to solve 10,000 questions to clear FRM part 1 exam is uh, what happened few days back a student called me and he said he saw some video and in that video some other faculty was saying like you have to solve 3000 questions to clear FRM part 1 exam. After few days one more student called me and he said he saw some another video where a faculty is saying other faculty is saying that you have to solve 5000 questions to clear FRM part 1 exam. So then I thought if this is a competition that you have to solve just we have to just say like it to students like you have to solve 3000 questions then you have to say 5000 questions so why to stop at 3000 or 5000 why not to simply say you have to solve 10,000 questions and misguide the students and make sure they fail in the FRM part 1 exam. So in this video what I am trying to do is I will try to resolve all those myths and misconceptions spread by the like unfortunately um, already certified FRM candidate, uh, um, certified FRM professionals regarding the number of questions should be solved in the exam uh, to clear the FRM part 1 exam this is for their commercial interest and here instead of just giving you the number a random number I will do few things I will first explain you why solving or approaching for this number like 3000 5000 questions to clear FRM part 1 exam is a sure recipe for failure in FRM part 1 exam Second, I will also tell you like how many number of questions is a decent number to clear FRM part 1 exam and you will be happy, you will really be happy after seeing that number. And then I will also tell you like how to optimize your question solving, like exactly how to solve those questions. Say you are solving 100 questions, then how to solve those questions. So I will try to answer all these three questions mainly. So we'll first start with the basic. See, whenever I have some opinion, I come up with the data analysis. I don't say anything without analysis, right? So first, recent exam pattern. So I'm taking May 2022 exam as well as the November 2021 exam and the general pattern. So uh, this particular exam pattern is more inclined towards the May 2022 compared to the November 2022. And this is very rough estimate, okay? So the rough, rough estimate goes like this total out of total 100 questions, there were around 15 numerical questions which comes under the difficult category. I will explain you each and everything what is a difficult category and what is the easy category with the example. Okay, so around 15 questions were difficult in numericals. So category is numerical and difficult in difficulty level. Then around 20 questions were easy in numerical. Then theory questions 30 easy questions and theory questions 35 difficult questions. So I should not say it as difficult. So like not easy is a better word because in between difficult and easy there is gray area. Okay, so theory questions will more into that particular gray area. Now what is meaning of easy and difficult in numerical section? So when we say numericals, easy numericals in the exam, so the questions which are directly linked with the concepts which I have already studied. I will give you the example. Example is say if you have studied the probability chapter in probability you know the conditional probability or total probability and the margin probability and unconditional probability or a priori probability. Now if you get a question on the calculation of say conditional probability and other two parts are given. Okay so unconditional probability or marginal probability is given, a priori probability is given and then you have to calculate the conditional probability or you are provided with the say p of a p of a given uh, p of b given a p of b given a like this if this is information you are provided with and then you have to calculate the marginal probability which you already read in the book so while preparing for frm curriculum through books you already saw those type of questions if these type of questions are coming in the exam i consider those questions as easy questions okay so around 20 percent of these questions were easy questions in the exam then comes a the difficult questions. Now in difficult questions we can divide these questions in two categories. One is the tricks in the normal question. So questions format or formation is normal but there are one or two tricks which you need to solve to get the answer. So around 10% of the or 10 questions out of these 15 questions were like this. So if you are good with the logical reasoning on all part naturally then you will be able to approach those type of questions even without additional practice. Simple. Then there were 5% or the 5 questions from this 15% uh, 
or 15 questions okay so 5 out of 15 questions were actually difficult where you will feel say even if I decide to solve the, those questions then I have to take the best guess and I cannot assure that I am going to take the right answer I am talking about that difficulty so these five questions no matter how many questions you solve 3000 5000 10000 it is not going to so help you in any way you have to apply your conceptual clarity or your concepts whatever you are studied in the book and then only you will be able to take the best guess there is no guarantee that you are taking the right answer but even if you take the best guess it will help you in some way now we will discuss the theory questions the easy and the difficult portion so in theory easy means the direct questions example we have financial disasters chapter in foundations of risk management book number one in that chapter majority of the questions are direct questions so if you remember a case if you remember what happened in that case so questions are tested directly on the facts if the questions are tested directly on the facts or the statements which are directly given in the book I will give you certain some examples. So first example is this financial disasters question. So are generally easy questions. Case studies are difficult. You have to remember the case studies, but the questions are very direct and then you have to answer those questions. Around 30% of the questions were like this. And then comes the difficult questions. Difficult questions are, I should also give like one more example of theory easy questions. So the questions tested on the assumption. So we have a lot of assumptions like we have CAPM assumptions, we have regression analysis assumptions or the linear regression, OLS regression assumptions. Then we also have concept like uh, in value at risk, we have coherent risk measure. We have where we discuss the monotonicity, subadditivity, like all those concepts. So these are the difficult concepts, but questions are direct. If these concepts are getting tested, high chances are the questions will be direct and not the complicated ones. Okay. So I consider all these questions in easy category. Then theory difficult. In theory difficult, I will also consider myself with you when I'm saying this. Okay. So in theory difficult section, the question is very interpretation based. What you have to do is in these type of questions, you are most likely like you will be able to eliminate two options and then you have to best guess out of the remaining two. If you are good with the concepts, the chances are approximately 50% of the time you'll be able to take correct answers. So meaning out of 35, approximately 17.5 or 17 questions will be correct. If you are good with the concepts and interpretation and you are doing or you are able to eliminate all those things, all the um, two remaining options. So I consider these type of questions as difficult. And I said I'm including myself with you because see, I'm teaching for past four or five years. Even with this much of experience, even if I sit for the exam, then also I have to best guess. Okay, I cannot confirm that this is the correct answer. So if this is the case with me or this is the case, this is applicable for everyone. Okay, everyone have to they take their best guess. So those who are very well prepared in the uh, with the concepts or they know concepts in very better manner, their guesses will be better. Those who are poor with the concepts, their guesses will be poorer. So that's the problem. Okay, now let's divide the section in just easy and difficult. So numerical easy, theory easy, total is for 50%. And maybe some of you are thinking like, okay, some of the students reported there were only 20 numericals or there were only 25 numericals and not the 35 numericals. So maybe you are correct. Okay. But I'm taking 35% because I saw there is increase in number of numericals from November 21 to May 2022. In November exam, students reported approximately 15, 20 numericals. In this exam, students reported approximately 30 uh, numericals. So I'm expecting the proportion should be the same in the coming exam. So this is the guidance for coming exam and not for the past exams, right? So I adjusted for that particular fact. So now see here to clear FRM exam, according to my analysis, you need approximately 60% correct questions. Okay. The 60 number of questions should be correct. Here, if you just consider easy numericals plus easy theory, remember easy does not mean the concepts were easy. It, the concepts might be difficult, but the questions are direct. So I consider all those questions as easy questions. So if you just consider this particular portion like numericals, easy theory, easy, this is 50%. What is your target? 60. How much you are able to prepare with just easy preparation? 50. Now your goal is to ensure you get at least 25 more correct because we want to ensure that we clear with the clear, like better margin, not just the like marginal clearance, right? 
you don't have to you don't want to pass frm exam with exact 60 because that might be a disaster right so <clears throat> definitely we will be planning for say 25 more correct or 30 more correct right so to do this if you have really good concepts you can manage difficult questions as well okay so this is about the exam pattern. So exam pattern gives us the information about around 25 to 30 percent questions are the numerical questions. Now let's talk about the question banks which are generally available or whoever is guiding about like 3000 5000 questions. I'm talking about those question banks because I know what is what are the questions. I already have those question banks which I don't provide it to anyone because I don't think it is going to add any value. Okay. And I also have my own questions, which I draft. Okay, so I generally draft based on the recent exams. Now see here, in any question bank, even I include my question bank as well. In any question bank, approximately 80% questions are numericals and 20% questions are theory questions. So now just see, if you are solving 5000 questions, I'm just taking the random like number 5000 or 3000, whatever is your preference. If you are solving 5000 questions out of those 5000 questions, 4,000 questions are numerical. In exam, you are going to get only 25, 30, 35 percent of the questions which are of the numerical nature. So you are putting 80 percent effort on just getting 25 percent or 35 percent of the exam. Okay. So now see the mismatch. If you solve like 5,000, 3,000 questions, so you are actually wasting your efforts. I will also tell you why you are wasting efforts. Uh, in next slide because I will tell you how much time you need to solve all those questions which you should plan in advance instead of just solving start solving the questions okay I hope you saw this okay so 20 percent is the theory portion and 80 percent is the numerical portion in any standard question bank maybe there are some question banks where you will see uh, uh, approximately say 30 percent numerical uh, theory questions and 70 percent numerical questions that's possible but this is a general trend now let's come back to this slide again the exam pattern I already told you the numerical easy means the questions which are directly coming from the illustrations or the basic concepts. Now to solve these questions, even if you focus properly on that illustration or the question which is given in your book, I am inc including Falcon's book as well as any other publications book. So if you focus on that particular part, you will be able to solve numericals properly. These 20%. Now see. You are putting 80% effort to get these 15% numericals and rest of the theory portion is literally missed because you are continuously focusing or you are only focusing on this numerical portion. Okay, so that's a very big problem. Now see what happens when you plan to solve 3000 questions. So here I'm taking 3000 questions and there are diff different different difficulty levels available in the um, <clears throat> uh, based on the question bank. There are easy question bank, medium question bank, difficult question bank. On my assumption, I also took the mixed question bank, which is my preference. The way I draft the questions are the mixed questions. So see easy question bank, medium question banks, uh, medium difficulty and uh, difficult. So on an average to solve easy question, you need six minutes because your goal is not just to see the question, tick the answer and move on. You will solve question uh, because you are solving, you are practicing, you are more likely to take uh, like uh, you will take more time compared to a exam scenario. So in exam, if you need three minutes, you are going to take six minutes, even in easy questions when you are solving or practicing, you will check the answer, read the answer. If your answer is incorrect, you will correct that answer and then you will move on. Okay. This key, this will keep going on. So I'm taking six minute on an average for say easy question by if you solve 3000 questions, it takes 300 hours. Medium question, medium difficulty takes, if the question bank is medium difficulty, then it takes 500 uh, hours. And if the question bank is really difficult and I like, I hope you know, I'm talking about like one particular question bank, which is abnormally difficult. 80% of the questions are pure wastage of the time. Only 20% questions are relevant for exam. Okay. So I hope you're able to guess it. So the difficult question bank, you are taking 15 minutes per question and there are like, there are, uh, that particular question bank don't have 3000 questions. There are very less questions. Okay. So I'm just assuming 3000 questions. If you solve 3000 questions like this, the difficult questions, then approximately you are consuming 750 hours, which is four hours on daily basis for the next six months. If you spend this much time, then only you will be able to finish this particular question bank. And 
this will ensure that you are compromising remaining preparation like the basic questions the interesting questions the more likely to get tested questions like this okay and then there is a mixed question bank so i assume 10 minutes per question on an average because some easy questions some difficult questions and then there are 500 hours which are required now remember 500 750 or 300 hours these hours are after excluding your mock test preparation your revision your actual preparation if you are doing cell study you you will take more time if you are doing classes depending on what type of classes you are taking you might need less time or more time again that's totally dependent but your normal preparation time without uh, practice is approximately 250 to 300 hours okay so if you, i'll just consider the falcons classes so if you are taking say classes from me then approximately 120 hours of content 30 hours 30 to 40 hours of revision videos and after this your own reading preparation revision time okay so this accounts for 300 hours so <clears throat> so if you do this and if you add question bank in that now you have to first plan will you be able to solve or finish your question bank okay so that's very crucial thing now please ensure all these things please take a look at all these things and then plan your preparation properly now you have around five months left for your exam november exam now <clears throat> before i answer this is the answer if you want to see the answer uh, then you can check it right now i will just give you some examples of <clears throat> this particular part okay some examples as in uh, i will show you some questions and i will show you what type of variations are there i will show you like my drafted questions from the falcons workbook and falcons book as well okay so let's go back to first the workbook so just check this workbook so in your hedge um, forward futures uh, portion you have um, hedging calculation okay now see <coughs> so you have to calculate the number of contracts uh, which uh, you should take long or short uh, to hedge up perfectly now see the hedge ratio so that particular question requires three particular parts so two particular parts specifically so first you have to calculate the hedge ratio and then second part you have to calculate the number of contracts and third part is if there is a question on telling the hedge then you have to also tell the hedge so three part question there is there are like limited possibility for this type of question to calculate number of contracts for hedging using the futures or the forwards there is possibility or there is boundary the question can be formatted only in that boundary and that boundary covers these many like these events only or the these options only now see first the first part so this is the falcons workbook where i provide the tasks so you have to solve this task so this is not the mcq but if you solve this task, you will be able to ensure that whatever is the question you'll be able to solve. Okay. Now see one, there is a hedge ratio calculation based on certain type of information, hedge ratio calculation based on other type of information, based hedge ratio calculation based on again, third type of information. So there are three possibilities using which you can calculate the hedge ratio. If you solve like this, if you calculate like this, then you will get that clarity of how to handle questions in the exam which is very important for you. So instead of solving 10,000 different questions, so I say 10 different questions, these three questions will cover at least 15, 20 questions. Okay. So this single task will cover 15 questions. Now, once you are able to solve the hedge ratio, you will get that clarity of how to deal with the hedge ratio. Once you get the hedge ratio, so hedge ratio is the beta only, right? Then we have the next part of the question. The question is on the calculation of the number of contracts. In exam, students face problem. I'm just talking about the hedge. So this is just an example illustration, which you can apply to any other question or any other concept. So in hedge ratio question, the difficulty starts from first the calculation of the hedge ratio. So there are possible variations, three variations possible using which you have to calculate the beta or the hedge ratio. Once you get the hedge ratio, then you have to calculate the total number of contracts. So if you already know the concept, you will be able to calculate the total number of contracts. Problem is going to happen in taking the long position or the short position. GARP knows this and if in every exam. So if say there are four options and I'm assuming total number of contracts, the correct answer is 20 long. Okay. So just assume 20 long contracts should be taken to hedge. This is the correct answer. 
So Gaap will provide options like this, long 20, short 20. So option A, long 20, option B, short 20. Option C, uh, long 40, option D, long 40. Now we have four options where two values are there, 20 and 40 with plus minus, that is long and short position. Even if you are able to calculate the number of contracts, students get confused in like, should they take the long position or the short position? And that's a big problem. To solve this, in this question you will see, first position is long, second position is long, third position is short, then we have short position again, but the beta is negative. And then there is a long position with the beta negative. So short position with the negative beta, long position with the negative beta, short position with the positive beta, long position with the positive beta. Beta varies from zero, one, and like in this range, negative to positive, everything. And then you have to calculate your total number of contracts and you have to also say long or short position. When you solve question like this, when you are solving everything simultaneously, you will develop this clarity of to take long position or short position, which generally is um, ignored by students when they are solving number of questions. Why? Because now your target, when you're solving 3000 questions, your target or your goal is not to analyze the question, not to understand the question, not to interpret the question, but to just solve the number of questions. And this type of preparation methodology is very pathetic, very wrong. Don't do all these things. If you are solving, say, 100 questions, you should analyze each and everything of that question. You should on your own think, okay, what if the question provides me this information? What if the question provides me that information? You should do this analysis. Maybe you won't be able to get the answer, but at least you will get the question correct. Okay, question correct in your mind. Then you can answer, uh, ask it to someone and then you will be able to like, you might get some answers, right? So this is the process. Process to ensure you are able to solve all the questions correct in the exam or the majority of the questions correct in the exam. Second example I would like to give you is the forward future pricing, okay, using the cost of carry or other models. So here again, this is the task and this table covers each and every possibility of this particular question. So approximately in every exam, uh, Garb asks two to three questions on future forward pricing. And now see the table, how this particular task works. Okay, so you are provided with the first the underlying price. So 1000. Now see, type of underlying stock commodity and stock for stock, see interest rates is given, interest rates are given for stock and commodity both. No storage cost, no dividend, no lease, and only the time duration is provided. So I have to simply calculate the forward price for first two. In second, see the stock. Okay, now the stock plus dividend and then six months. Now see the beauty of this particular task. You are provided with the three stocks question, different percentage, and dividend is provided in the different format. First provides the yield of 2%, second provides the amount of 25, third also provides the amount of 25. And now see the problem. A is 25, that is the dividend is 25. Time to maturity, 12 months. This dividend is due in three months. So now you have to calculate Obviously, you will calculate the present value and then you will solve it. In second case, you have dividend of 25. Due date of the dividend is in six months, but time to maturity this particular future or the forward is just three months. So your forward contract is maturing three months and then you have six months for the dividend. Now, how to treat this particular type of dividend? What to do with the dividend? So when you see everything side by side, you will be able to understand and get the proper clarity of how to deal with this situation. So if GARP asks say third type of scenario, then you will have very proper clarity or very great clarity on dealing with those type of questions. Okay. And in similar fashion, you have all the events. Okay. So in similar fashion, we have this like regression part, probability part. So the workbook for the probability and like this, and then you can also see the notes are designed. The Falcon's book is designed like this. So Falcon's book in this, we provide, so this is a cost of carry model in the forward and the future pricing, where the concept is explained like this. If the storage cost is paid in advance, what to do? If the storage cost is paid after six months, what to do? If the storage cost is paid at maturity, then what to do? So all three scenarios are covered in the illustration because I'm firm believer of illustrations are very important and illustrations are like, you're more likely to remember illustrations compared to the question bank you solve, okay? So that's why I tried to cover all the possible scenarios and this will also help you in getting the clarity of this very specific question like 
why you are doing something in a particular question or in the concept so if you do this then you will be able to get the uh, things in a very correct manner or the concept in a very correct manner now this is about like my approach now what about your approach because say a lot of you are doing self study or some of you are doing say classes from some different institutes now what you should do definitely you don't have the workbook you don't have my questions my book and everything so for you the suggestion is when you take any particular question take that question and completely dissect that question instead of solving 3000 questions solve 600 beautiful questions and every question should be dissected into the parts you yourself think about what should be the treatment for a particular aspect like this i showed you the storage cost paid in advance paid in the mid paid in the end what should be the treatment there is fourth possibility storage cost is paid in every month then what should be the treatment so when you see a particular question think on it try to come up with your own possibilities if you do this maybe you won't be able to get the answers correct but you will get the question very correctly so you will be able to develop your own four five questions in your mind and this is how you get the clarity in any question please ensure you do this so that you are able to handle the complete exam correctly now i said like the theory the difficult portion if you apply this particular approach you will develop a uh, thought process which will also help you in dealing with those difficult theory questions and that's why this approach is very important so now the answer how many questions you should solve this is according to me and again this is not a black and white rule so you should solve and analyze the rule is solve and analyze not just solve solve 6 to 800 good quality questions which are in line with the learning objectives provided by the gar okay and next i said this is not the black and white okay so 600 to 800 question should be your first target if you have more time then you can add or you may add say more 600 800 questions if you have more time then again keep adding all those questions no problem with that but don't start with the notion of solving 3000 questions in the beginning itself that's going to be a great disaster okay so again <clears throat> this particular type of thing like this creates a big problem okay so when you start with the planning of 3000 questions what happens is students are unable to solve those many questions those who are working specifically okay and when students are unable to solve questions they lower their confidence they are under confident for their exam and they it affects the, their exam and for me the problem is student going like i think the biggest problem for the frm student is they go or they reach to the exam center with very low confidence okay and that should not happen so that's why uh, i hope like uh, you understood my point what i'm trying to say here and again how to deal with the theory questions to deal with the theory questions uh, first read properly second read in detail understand in detail you should be able to understand each and everything in a very proper manner if you are unable to understand it then handling difficult theory questions will be very difficult okay and one more thing to handle difficult theory questions don't try to correct or uh, tick the right answer just try to eliminate two and get the two answers correctly okay so that's a better approach compared to trying attempting to tick the correct answer right so this is how you handle the difficult theory questions easy theory questions are direct only if you remember the content you will be able to solve those questions again third easy uh, numerical questions then again solve or analyze the questions you will be able to handle all those 20% question and remaining 50% questions are also manageable or the 15 questions are also manageable but five questions are going to kill your time it is going to be very difficult so know this in advance you should know which question to skip okay this is the very great ability this kind of a super power i don't have that super power i have some ego problem uh, if i sit for any exam and if i see a difficult question which i already know the i know the concept but the question is difficult i engage with that question i waste my time don't do it avoid it so that's why i said avoiding a question is a super power right so this is all about your question like how many number of questions you should solve so that's all that's all from me i will also come up with the new videos on the preparation strategy where i'll guide you on all these small points which kills students exam and i will try to help you in all those things right so keep subscribe see you in the next video thank you everyone thank you for watching